Hello and welcome to the Relationship Hub. In a traditional church wedding, you would typically hear a couple promising themselves to each other in sickness and in health. This is a public declaration whereby the couple are promising to stand by and support each other, remaining committed to each other should tough times of poor health come along. Well, for Jess and Luke Hills, before their wedding day had even arrived, their intention to be true to this promise was realised as Jess faced the sudden onset of an unknown life-changing illness that changed everything for them. Jess even felt compelled to give Luke a way out and told him that he didn't need to go ahead and marry her if he wanted out. Well, this is their story of how they overcame immense health challenges together and how they now believe that their relationship is better and stronger because of it. Jess is a manager for a national charity that supports and strengthens family life and Luke is a civil servant and law student and they live in Cardiff. Jess and Luke, welcome to the Relationship Hub. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having us. We're really excited to share some of our story with you. Fantastic. So when and how did you guys meet? So we met online um, through online dating. Um, we then started uh, chatting to each other through, through that, then through got each other's mobiles, texting, FaceTime, and then eventually decided to meet in person. And, and when you actually met, I mean, obviously you've said you'd been texting and so on. I mean, how soon after did you meet over that period of time? Was it a couple of months, a couple of weeks or? I think it was a couple of weeks, wasn't yeah. it? It was quite um, intense. I mean, we met and even that chatting online, it felt like, hey, there's something different about this guy. And it, so, yeah, we got, like Luke said, we got to know each other mm. over those weeks um, with the texting and the FaceTimes and there. So we met halfway. So we right. actually lived about two, two and a half hours away from each other. So we found a central spot that was easy for us both. And yeah, we met there, didn't we? Yeah. So was it really nerve wracking? Because I, I mean, I, I didn't meet my husband through online dating. In fact, when I met him, there well, he wasn't as much of that, in all honesty, there's much more available now, which is, which is a good thing. Um, but I just think that build up, you're texting, but actually meeting each other in person. How was that first day? Was it successful? Uh, it was successful, um, but we were both incredibly nervous. Um, we're both naturally introverted. So, um, yeah, so it's not, not our idea of what we would ordinarily enjoy. No. But um, I, I, I'm naturally shy because that's who I am when I first meet people and just went. I went the opposite. opposite. So I went the extreme opposite of incredibly chatty. So I was... <laughs> Walking along thinking, oh, he's, he's quite quiet. He must be nervous. I'll ask him questions. And the questions were, so what's your favourite animal? What's your favourite colour? And Luke was saying, oh, I'm, I'm not sure. And I'm saying, but you must know. Everybody's got a favourite colour. And I was getting so kind of excited oh. and nervous. Yeah. But it calmed down, didn't it? Yes. It, it yeah. calmed down. And we recognised that we had already spoken through a lot of this stuff on the phone yeah. and on FaceTime. So... It calmed down and we had a, a really nice first date in the end. I, I love that. I, I mean, I'm just imagining you both and, you know, and, and Luke, you're there being very quiet and, and you're asking the kind of questions that so, someone might ask in the playground, basically, Jess, aren't you your yeah. favourite colour, your favourite animal? I mean, Luke, you must find a moment of thinking, is this actually the person I met online or is this some <laughs> imposter or? <laughs> it, it was very odd. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think once we got over those initial nerves, yeah. we found somewhere to just sit and, and talk and chill. Um, it, it became a lot easier for both of us. We it became did. less nervous. Um, yeah. And we, yeah, we kind of got back to, as, as we were, as it was when we were texting each other. Yeah. It became yeah. more normal. Normal, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just getting over that initial hurdle of like the meet, yeah. as it were, the first meeting. Mm -hmm. So now that's round about four years ago. So I'm interested to know how soon after having met each other, you've had that initial, you know, meeting, you know what Luke's favourite animal is now, you know, <laughs> how soon after did you decide, okay, we want to get married and that this is the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with? It was, it was quite soon. So we were very intentional when we were dating, weren't we? Yeah. So we very much didn't want to waste each other's time. We wanted to get to know each other, but we knew quite soon there's something here 
Mm. And so we discussed marriage quite early on. We both really believe in marriage. It was something that we wanted for our lives. Mm. Yeah. And we were very intentional about discussing it. And so Mm. I would say, how many, a couple of months? Probably, yeah. Yeah, a couple of months. And for us, it was really important that Luke discussed it with my family. You know, not everybody, um, you know, how it has those views, but for us, it's really important. And so I think you had a chat with my mum and my dad who who are divorced. So I have two two sets of parents. So you chatted with them both separately, probably when we've been together, how many months? Probably like five months. Four, five months. Yeah. And then we got engaged around Seven uh, seven months. Yeah. Okay. Now, straight away, I'm imagining people listening to this. And there'll be some people perhaps who have a similar story thinking, yes, that makes a lot of sense. And other people will be thinking, my goodness, that's so soon. That's so quick to have made that decision. And people often feel, well, you've got to really know a huge amount about somebody. How can you know enough about somebody in that short space of time is the kind of questions they might might ask. So what would you what would you say to that? Um, I think it's because I think it, it comes down to your relationship at the end of the day. So every, every relationship is different. Some, as, as you said, some people will will think that it's, it's very quick. Um, yeah. For other people, you've already gone through all of the conversations and, and you already know everything about someone and you know yeah. that, that that's where you want to go next. That's the next natural step is, is marriage. So for some people, it, it would just be a case of let's take that step, let's... Um, ask those questions let's have those conversations um and and yeah yeah we we were really intentional weren't we and so we were really intentional about opening up our lives completely to one another to have somebody who still loves you when they know the deepest darkest things about you the really ugly things about you as well as the really beautiful things about you is powerful we were intentional about getting to know each other's families. We were intentional about having those conversations mm. that no one likes to have about some of the painful stuff that's happened to us because all of us have pain. All of us have things that have happened that are really yeah. hard. And we were so intentional about not just having great date days, but really yeah. getting to those foundations. And so when it came to that, yes, it was absolutely mm. natural as a next step. But what I would also say is, whilst we did get engaged at month seven, we got married exact, more or less exactly a year after we got engaged. So by the okay. time we got married, we had been together over 18 months. Yeah. Um, but we felt confident enough in each other and in our relationship to commit to an engagement at mm. month seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's No, that's great. It's interesting. And I think as well, sometimes in this discussion that I've had with other people, there's almost that sense, well, actually you don't have to know everything anyway beforehand. No. You, I think there's certain alignment of values that you need to know about before you commit to something like that. Because if, if your mindset is on two different things, well, then it, it potentially isn't going to work. But when your values are the same, mm. you can then work out the things as mm. part, part of growing together. Um, and, you know, I think that's probably a bit of what you're explaining there as well, that intention with the families. And I think that's a really good point and perhaps helpful for people who are thinking, mm. golly, that f- even 18 months feels quick for some people. Yeah. So, um, and just one other question on this, and then we'll kind of move on to the next part of the story. Um, often people are feeling like, how do you know it's the one? And, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not ashamed to say I've asked this a few times to guests because <laughs> I think it's a question that people keep asking. How mm. do you know that this is the right person for me? I'm, I'm doing this now, but it's the rest of my life. Mm. I think love is a really interesting thing, isn't it? It's an interesting concept because Luke told me that he loved me very early on. But the way that Luke loves me now is deeper than how he loved me then but it's no more complete so he loved me completely as much as he could yeah and then you know he loves me more now he loves me more now but I think for us in knowing that we wanted to be together it was we cannot imagine our lives without this person in it Mm. yeah we want the same things our we want a journey together I want you in my life I Mm. want to experience things. When something happens, you're the first person I want to call. When something bad happens, it's your support that I want. Um, And we're best friends. You know, know, we are best friends. Our marriage is based on a really deep friendship, a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, Mm. and a lot of quality time together. 
And there came a point when we know, and it says a cliche to say when you know, you know, but there is a lot of truth in that. And it's mm. really hard to articulate. But it's for us, it was that I cannot imagine my life continuing without yeah. you in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's really good, actually, because I think that is a, a that's almost a good question that people could ask themselves. Actually, can you imagine life without this person? That's maybe that's, I, th I think, I th one of the most useful points that's been given on this question, actually, because mm -hmm. I, I think that is actually quite a practical thing. Can you imagine life without that person? Um, so, yeah, no, that's fabulous. Now, so far, this all sounds quite lovely, fairy tale like you know, you're out in line and, you know, giggly, nervous meeting, you know, the whole conversation, <laughs> getting comfortable, you know, conversations with the family. It just all sounds just wonderful and perfect and what people dream of. You began to plan a wedding, but Jess, it was during this time that you became unwell. So what happened? So you're right. Until that point, it very much was a fairy tale. It's a really good word to use. It was it was almost perfect. Yeah, so Luke and I got engaged. And quite soon after that, I started to get pain in my wrists. And doctors put it down to a range of things. But then the pain went to my ankles. And again, the doctors put it down to a range of different things. But over a number of weeks and then into months, every joint, every muscle in my body started to weaken, started to fail or started to be painful. Um, and yes, you're right. This is in the middle of us planning a wedding. And it was incredibly scary. We had no idea what was happening to me. Right. So, yes, it was mm. a very worrying time, just not knowing what the heck is happening to my body. I'm a perfectly healthy 30 year old what the yeah. heck is happening yeah yeah and and actually I've asked that question you've answered in a few moments but the intensity of dealing with something like that must have been so frightening and Luke for you seeing Jess experiencing this pain and seeing it increasing so almost mm. okay pain's happening and it's all going in the wrong direction how how did you find this how did you deal with this um I think it, it's it's hard because you don't know, not knowing what's happening, and just mm. just seeing someone that you love just getting worse each day, each yeah. week. There's there's um, two risk kind of responses you can have in that situation. You can either um, have what I would say say is a negative response, where you're just like, well, I don't know what's happening. What can it, I can't help. I can't do anything. Um, mm. But for me, I went to a thing of right. How can I help this person? How can I help Jess? Yeah. in in day-to-day -day life how can I help her physically um and how can I help her emotionally process what's going on mm. um how how can I provide support to her to make to help try and make things easier for her yeah. um and yeah and yeah I think it's, it's just a case of trying to figure out what what it is that I can do to, to help her. It's about asking. It was for me. I was asking her what I can do, to help support yeah. her, rather than trying to assume what it is that she needs yeah. from me. Yeah, that's good. Because um, then she can tell me what I can do yeah. to help her. And for one day it might be physical, might might be doing something physically. Another day it might be do doing something um, to help her emotionally process things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jess, what did that actually look like? Tell me what Luke did for you during that time because your inability to do things progressed, didn't it, over that time of pain and so on? Absolutely, it really did. And Luke and I didn't live together until we were married. So at the time, Luke was living about a mile from where we live mm -hmm. now, from this, from this home, with friends of ours. And so there were some things that we felt we needed to put a boundary in place. There were some things that weren't maybe appropriate for him to do because we weren't married at the time. But there yeah. were some things that are. So, for example, Luke would do the cooking. He would cook meals. He would do my laundry. He would wash our, my, well, my clothes because obviously his clothes were where he was mm. living. He would yeah. clean, you know, clean my toilet, do the vacuum, vacuuming, whatever he could. Because by this point, I was very weak. I was struggling yeah. to uh, use my arms, use my legs. And so, yes, he came in to a home that wasn't his yet and basically took charge of it and did everything that he could so I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. It was must... incredible. I can't yeah. tell you how much that meant and how powerful that is. And, and what an incredibly bonding period of time mm -hmm. that must have been as well for you. Absolutely. Um, 
So Jess, your health understandably took you to a mentally low place. You were fearful about what the future held. At this point, you still didn't actually know what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, such was your worry and concern that you even gave Luke this sort of sense of a get out of, of this situation um, where you said, basically, you don't have to stay with me if you don't want to. What was it like to, to say that, mm. you know, and, you know, why did you decide to give Luke this kind of opportunity to leave this relationship that you had so loved and loved to continue to? Yeah, absolutely. So I did do that. It was only the once because Luke's word is his word. So once he had answered that, we didn't go back to that. But I did yeah. say that. I think it's important to understand that during this period, physically, I'm in pain. And emotionally, mm. I am in pain. Because like I said, I was a healthy 30-year-old. There, yeah. There's no chronic illness in my family. I had never, ever considered I would have a chronic mm. illness. All of a sudden, I can't move properly. I'm in pain. Mm. And we have no reason to believe this isn't it for the rest of our lives. There's no diagnosis. We don't mm. know what's wrong. Mm. I could never get better. And I love, loved, still love Lou. And he was absolutely incredible. But I was in this emotional state, aware that when we met and when he asked me to marry him, this isn't what he signed up for. Mm -hmm. Now, he signed up for life. I'm not saying that's not what he signed up for. But what I mean is he asked a perfectly healthy person. He didn't yeah. ask somebody who was becoming more and more vulnerable yeah. um, and who could live her whole life with a disability. And so I desperately did not want him to take my offer up. Of course yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't want him to. I want to spend the rest of my life with my man. But I loved him enough to say, if this is too much, if this is not what you want your life to look like, mm. then it's okay. You are free. You are not bound to me. I want you to have the best life possible. I want the best for you. And if the best for you is life without me and my mm. potential disability or my potential chronic illness then please know I'm not going to force you to stay. And so that was the heart behind it. But inside yeah. I was crying, thinking, please don't take me up on this. Yeah. I want you and I need you, yeah. but I love you too much to force you as a yeah. woman to stay. Yeah, that's incredibly brave, incredibly moving, Jess, as well. And, you know, yeah, remarkable that you were able to do that. And, and Luke... What on earth did you think when when Jess said this? I mean, I obviously I know that you didn't accept it, but mm. what was your response? How did it make you feel? Um, I, I at, at the time I, I understood what she was, why she asked, why she had asked it. So I understood the heart behind it, um, and I knew that, that all she was thinking about was what was best for me. Um, she wasn't even thinking about herself, but for me, it was something that wasn't. An option, and by that I mean it wasn't something that I'd even thought about do, mm. taking up. So it wasn't something that was ever um, something that I was I was considering even in the slightest. So yeah, um, it was some. I I knew that when I said um, when, when I asked her to to marry me, I knew exactly what that meant at that stage, and I already knew going forwards what I would be promising. And mm. even though there wasn't. Um, any tie in one sense because we were only engaged at that point I knew that, that as soon as I'd asked her to, to marry me I knew that, that that was a commitment that I was making yeah and I knew that that man in as as, as you promised in your wedding vows in in sickness and in health I knew that that um we'd already had um a period of health and and even though Jess was unwell at this stage I knew that I was still going to support her and I knew that I that she needed support in that sense. Mm, um, but mm. I also knew her heart behind it. And I knew yeah. that she didn't want me to, to go. So yeah, even yeah. though she'd asked me on, on that occasion, it, I basically, I think I said no, pretty much straight, well, yeah. I didn't straight away. Said, no, absolutely no. not. And we're yeah. going on. Get yeah. that out of the way. No, absolutely. we're not having it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You must have felt like you loved her even more for her saying it, Luke. Uh, I think I'm yeah. looking more Jess from hearing it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It strengthened us even more, didn't it? Yeah. It added yeah. even more strength to what was already a really strong relationship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, let's move forward then. You're, you know, you did eventually get a diagnosis um, and, um, and it was a difficult even getting the diagnosis. How did you find out what was wrong? Just so we can piece the, the story together. 
Yeah, so I was getting worse and worse and worse. And um, they finally, um, local doctors finally said, hey, we think this might be a rheumatology issue. We're going to refer you to the local hospital, which in, in and of itself was a just, oh, thank you moment. I felt heard. And that's yeah. fantastic. Until you realize the waiting list is 26 weeks. Ugh. And we would be married Sinking by feeling. Then. Yeah. And, uh, and I was thinking, but we're getting married before then. My health is going to deteriorate every day until then. I can't, I can't do this. I absolutely can't. And I love our NHS and we are so thankful yeah. to the NHS. But in that moment, we knew we had to do something more. And so it was my mum actually who said, enough is enough. We're not waiting six months. This is too important. Let's get you diagnosed privately. And then mm. we'll go back to the NHS for your treatment. So we yeah. knew that the amount of money would be small, relatively yeah. small. We knew it wouldn't be thousands. We just needed the diagnosis. And so I rang a local private hospital and weeping down the phone, explaining it was a six month wait. And the woman said to me, you've got a slot tomorrow morning. And it was like this anxiety started to melt in just knowing I could be seen. So mm. I was seen by a consultant. Within 10 minutes, he said, I know what's wrong with you. Gave me the name of what was wrong. And he explained that only 600 people have this disease and that most doctors have only studied it in medical school and that this is why it wasn't picked up because they're not used to diagnosing this particular illness. That's within the UK, Jess, the 600 That's within the UK. Within... Yes. So there's no, um, how can I put it? There's no help. There's no support groups. There's yeah. no real website. There's, there's nobody because 600 people in the UK out of 60 million people makes mm. it incredibly rare. And so they just haven't heard of it. It's not something yeah. that commonly goes through your, your, your GP surgeries. Yeah. So we had the diagnosis and yes, that's hard, but we finally knew. We finally yeah. knew this thing that was trying to destroy our lives finally had a name. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess understanding, I think partly not feeling in the dark anymore, understanding what was going mm. on. There's a yes. way of moving forward, albeit it's a tough thing to hear. Um, so, Jess, obviously diagnosis has come through, but things became worse for you. Um, you'd obviously um, had some test results, but they hadn't come through. You had some tests mm -hmm. that hadn't come through, um, but you found yourself unable to walk. So what, what happened? Yeah, so we had the most amazing consultant who was also an NHS consultant and ended up being my main consultant anyway. And he had said, this is what's wrong with you. But I'm going to be honest. Don't let me do your tests. It'll cost you thousands as a family. We will do mm. the money and, and the NHS. It'll take about a week. But in that week, all of a sudden, I got incredibly unwell. And it was one Sunday. I remember it now. We were sat in this room. We were sat on the sofa. And Luke was sitting there. And my legs were on top of his legs. So I was extended out. And you saw, what did you say to me? Do you remember? Um, yeah, just said you need to get up and, and stretch your legs because um, it, it would help your, your muscles try and actually move. work. Because at this Not point... Not seize up sort of thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, they were seizing constantly. So every mm. time I would get up from a sitting or whatever position, I'd be in pain. So Luke was saying, hey, it's been a few hours. You've got to get up. It's going to hurt otherwise. And I looked at you and I said, I can't move my legs. Wow. And I think you'd said, oh, come on, it'll be all right. They're just seizing. And I said, I, I can't move my legs. And I lost the ability to wait there. I lost the ability to walk. And so it was petrifying. I was crying. You were crying. Mm. We rang our, one of my best friends who happened to live across the road. She comes in and she's distraught. We realise this is not seizing. This is mm. my legs are not working. Yeah. So, you know, we rang an out of hours. We got a doctor over who I don't think really at the time believed me. I think he thought maybe they were seizing. He was like, come on, get up. And I was, I was having to show him, I can't, it's gone, we're done. An ambulance was going to take five hours because it was a busy weekend. Because this was a Sunday. So Golly. you've got all everything from the Saturday night still in A&E. Yeah. And so somehow between Luke and our friend Sarah, you managed to get me in a car. And there was a wheelchair waiting for me at A&E. And wow. I was left there because you can't have lots of people with you. So Luke, this is, this is two in the morning. Luke has work the next day. So Luke went home, Sarah went home. And then I am, I'm there then in this wheelchair in, in accident and emergency, not knowing what's happening. 
to me. And, and how long were you waiting, Jess? Because obviously, you know, obviously Luke, you're thinking, well, she'd probably get, get seen fairly soon and mm. make sense, you know, to say, you know, alert yourself so you can be back there the next day and all that. Those are the kind of yeah. things you try and think practically about. Yeah. But yeah. obviously, Jess, you weren't there for a couple of hours, were you? You waited, is it 12 hours, as I understand? Yes. So it was an incredibly busy weekend. And there will have been uh, emergencies coming in that would be more serious than what was happening to me. Now, when it's you, you absolutely feel like it is the biggest crisis yeah. of your life. And it was the biggest crisis of our life. But there were people far sicker than me coming in. And so I just kept going down the list. It took 12 hours. It was probably one of the most difficult nights of my life because I needed to use the bathroom, but I yeah. couldn't stand up. So I would need a nurse every time. And I was thirsty, but thinking I, I'm not going to drink any water because if I do, I'll need to go yeah. to the loo. And yeah. it was a catch-22 situation. And I I mean, my mind went to all the places that it would. I started to think, will I be in a wheelchair? Is someone going to have to push me down the aisle in a wheelchair? Mm. Will I ever walk again? Mm. What does that look like? Yeah. Will I, what does that look like for us in one day wanting to be parents? Will I be a mother who, you know, parents with the support of a wheelchair? Uh, yeah. All the questions. And also, it's, I guess it's about remembering that I hadn't slept for, I don't think I slept for about 20 hours. So you've also got that impact on your mental health and yes. your physical health. So yeah. I'm bordering on hysteria at this point, genuinely believing the worst. And there's nobody there in the middle of the night to say, mm. hey, it may not come to that. Calm down. It's okay. My thoughts yeah. have just gone down a rabbit hole and they're not coming back. Yeah, horrible. That sounds absolutely awful. Really yeah. traumatic. Um, mm. Obviously, eventually you were seen and yes. you're in hospital for a week. But yes. that sense of trauma must have really hit you. And I mean, I guess for you, Luke, again, I mean... You're, you, you come across, Luke, you know, just this kind of humble kind of person. I'm just getting on. I did the cleaning. I did this. And this is the person you love who is going through this traumatic time. And there's, I think that the hardest thing when you love somebody is the limitation you can sometimes feel in what you can do. Um, mm. And I mean, did you feel helpless? Did you feel frightened? How are you dealing with this? Because obviously it's happening to Jess, but yeah. it's happening to you in, a, in its own way, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's difficult because you, you've got the person you love is in hospital and you can only see them at, at certain times of day because that's, that's, that's the way that, that hospital is when you when you go yeah. in as an adult. You only get to see them. Two hours so, a day. So for me, it would have been two hours a day because I was back in during the other visiting hours. Um, so you can only go and see them a couple of hours a day um, and, and you're working as well. So you can't really speak to them during that time either. So... It's a case it, for me. It was it's quite difficult because I could literally only see and understand bits of what was going on for a two-hour yeah. session when I went in to see her. Um, so, so you got that thought of what's going on, what's happening, not knowing what 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 tests are being done, what what um, how how is she being treated, and, and obviously because it's the NHS, they they were amazing. Mm. But you just don't know what's happening mm. um and mm. going day to day worrying about what, what, what is this the day that, that she gets the diagnosis confirmed is this the day that they tell her this is going to be lasting for a long time am I going to be there when she gets told that news how can I support her you just don't have any answers to anything until yeah. you go in again to, to see to see them and then mm. you've got a few more answers, but then you've got a pile more questions that you just don't know yeah. about yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And did it feel like it was a strain at all on either of you on your relationship? Because, you know, you just wanted to enjoy being together and look forward to a wedding. Mm. Did you feel the strain of things in hospital or? I think I would say that we both felt the strain individually. So I felt mm. the strain of, my goodness, this is my body. It's not in my control. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong. I need my medication. Luke has the strain of, oh my goodness, I just want to help her, but I can't do anything other than get the keys to her flat and go and clean it for her mm, and yeah. be there for her. But I wouldn't say it put a strain on our relationship. If anything, it had the complete opposite effect mm. for us. And we recognise mm. that there will be people where illness has put a huge strain on their relationship in a negative way. 
But for us, it just drew us closer. Mm -hmm. It made us stronger. We chose to move towards each other in our grief and in our worry and in our confusion as opposed to away from each other. So we shared that and we allowed it to help build strength in us Mm -hmm. as opposed to tear us apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's that vulnerability, isn't there, in in sh- mm. in the in you showing your emotions, showing your yes. fear, and actually vulnerability is the place in which we often grow as individuals, but certainly as two people together, because yes. it it creates fresh connection that perhaps yes. wasn't even there before, um, that you didn't yes. imagine you'd have to experience, but it brought you to that place. So in hospital for a week, but then you get your right medication, you're out of hospital, you begin mm. to improve and regain strength, which must have been like relief at a relief for you um how long after this point did you have to wait until your wedding and mm. were you able to enjoy this period of time leading up to the wedding it's it's a funny one because the diagnosis uh was a blessing it was so fantastic and the medication was what i needed but it was very much a double edged sword so the medication made me better mm. and all of a sudden you know, to to give some context to this, if you imagine that you are sitting in a chair to get up, I would have to put both hands underneath my ankle to lift my legs. That's how I would get in and out of a chair or a bed. So Mm. within two weeks to be able to drive again is is nothing short of miraculous and it feels wonderful. And those first few weeks I felt great. Um, I remember my hen weekend, we went away and I remember walking up these stone stairs to bed, having to lift each leg onto the next step but being grateful to walk. And so, yes, the medication gave me a, quite literally a new lease of life. But I also yeah. had the side effects. I put three stone on in weight. Right. So by the time we got married, I was three stone heavier than I would have been. And for a woman, that's a particularly hard pill to swallow. You, It's not all about how we look. Of course it isn't, but we want to feel our best. Yeah. And the Jess that got married was not representative of how, of, of, yeah. of the physical Jess a few months ago. And so, yes, we chose to enjoy it. Mm. I think the theme here is our intentionality. We were intentional. We did not allow it to rob our joy because we were still getting married and we planned mm. it and we did some lovely things and, you know, and we celebrated every milestone in my getting better. So, you know, when mm. I could drive and you know, all the different milestones, we celebrated them, yeah. but it was bittersweet Yeah, because... Yeah. It, it, you know, this illness gives and takes away, you know, yeah. there was so yeah. much given to us, but also I felt that the impact of side effects really hit me and really hit my mental health, if I'm honest, yeah. um, and it, and it robbed me a little of my self-confidence at the time. And it, it was, it was a, it was a process. It was a journey. I'm still on that journey. Um, but above all, I got my health back and there's no yeah. price for that. Mm. So yeah. it was hundred yeah. percent worth it, but yes, it was hard. And it, you mentioned earlier about that sort of fear of not being able to walk down the aisle when you're lying in the hospital or in your hospital chair, whatever, waiting, and those those anxious thoughts. Um, but you did walk down the aisle, didn't you? You did walk down the aisle. You weren't in a I chair. I did walk down the aisle. I walked. Uh, we happened to get ready at the venue at the church we're a part of. I walked down the stairs with no pain. I walked down the aisle with no pain. I wore heels probably only for half an hour, but I wore them without pain. (laughs) And the day of our wedding, and we are so thankful that I was not in pain. Yeah. A few days later on our honeymoon, I was in pain and couldn't really walk. But for our wedding day, it was fantastic. And no, there was no wheelchair in sight. I mean, what did you think when you saw Jess coming down the aisle? Was it that sense of, wow, we've got here and wow, you know, how did it feel for you? It was... Um, all, all of excitement. It was a oh, wow because she looked amazing. Um, um, it was just, yeah, we just, it was just so exciting because, yeah, um, she she got to that place where actually she was able to walk down the aisle. Yeah, where she was able to. We, she'd actually achieved everything that she wanted to, and we had, um, yeah, it was it was very powerful because just a couple a few months earlier she was. In, in lying in a hospital bed, unable to walk, unable to move, really, yeah. without need and um, without needing some meds, yeah. without needing meds, really, to, to in order to to do it. So yeah, it, it was 
such a it was a relief as well because I knew that she, that Jess had got what she wanted in in that yeah. sense that she was able to yeah. walk down the aisle. And we so. captured it. It's a, it's one of my favourite photos from our wedding day because as you can imagine. I don't love all of our wedding photos, you know, and that's a very small price to pay for your health. But there are some that I I love. And one is they managed to capture the moment the doors opened and Luke saw me. And just the, it just encapsulates. I mean, there's tears in his eyes. There's awe in his eyes. There's relief in his eyes. And yeah, I think it's probably my favorite photo from our wedding that when he initially saw me in that moment, it means so much, so special, so very precious. I'm, I'm getting goosebumps hearing about it. I mean, I, I can't imagine what it must have been like in, in that church that day. Mm. I can't imagine that you were the only ones with with eyes that were moist. I'm sure there were those looking on, knowing all that you've done. Mm. I mean, yeah. a wedding day is often a time of reflection for families and friends, and they look at where these friends have come from and what they're doing. That must have been such an, an intensely emotional mm. moment for everybody in, in that church at that time. I can't imagine. It was. And I think what's really important to say here is that we didn't spend tens of thousands on our wedding. Now, the feedback we have had from our wedding from countless guests is there was something about your wedding. It was incredible. We have never experienced a wedding like yours. People crying all the way through it. People <laughs> moved. Those who knew our story and those that maybe didn't know all the detail. But that wasn't because we spent 50 grand on it. Like, yeah. it was the atmosphere that was created in that room. It was mm. it was the coming together of us and yeah. all that we'd been through. It, mm. wasn't, it wasn't the venue that did that. It was yeah. the story. Mm. And it yeah. was so powerful. People still talk about the, our wedding ceremony because yeah. it was so powerful mm-hmm. it really was and I, isn't it? Yeah. and I'm sure as well um you know you mentioned earlier Luke about the those promises and sickness and health mm-hmm. and, and in my introduction I you know I talked about the fact you know that you had to realize that the importance of that both of you before you got married so when you actually said your wedding vows to each other how how did that feel when you got to that line like you're thinking this is weighted isn't it yeah, that was probably the hardest line to say in one sense because we'd already gone through it. Um, so we already knew what that felt like. Um, mm. But it's also one of the easiest to say because because we'd already gone through it. So it's, yeah. it's a double-edged sword, but, but also the same thing at the same time. So it's hard and easy for two different reasons. Yeah. Um, and... That was the I think that was the, the one line that caught got us both when we promised it to each other because we'd, we'd lived through that experience. We knew what it felt like. We knew yeah. what it meant for each other, and we'd come in one sense. We'd come through the other side because we got to the wedding day. We just brought down the aisle. We'd, we'd in one sense we'd seen the worst of of it yeah. off. Um, um, so. Yeah, it, it was difficult to say, it, it but it was it was something that we knew that we we'd already gone through, so it's also very easy to, to, to make that yeah. promise at the same time. And it's the yeah. only point of in our wedding day that I cried. Right. So I was the calmest bride you've ever met. Our photographer was like, "Are you okay?" Because <laughs> things went wrong. Quite a few things went wrong on the day of our wedding. We um, little things, things that would normally maybe upset somebody. I didn't care. I just want to marry Luke. You know, yeah. at one point, um, they lights turned up that said Mr and Mrs Hill but we're hills with an S <laughs> again it's fine we'll sort it out our taxi broke down after our wedding photos it's fine I was so relaxed because I was so confident in knowing I was marrying this man and I walked down the aisle not a single tear I was smiling I was joyous but when I went to say in sickness and in hell I choked yeah. and I was emotional and I needed a moment because yeah. he's lived this out yeah like this man has lived this out and more and the emotion and the pain and everything that had happened over the last six months Mm. just came to a head and it was incredibly overwhelming Mm. Um, so powerful yeah amazing um now I just a bit of a a sideways question but I think you're both um qualified to answer this really because (laughs) people sometimes talk about marriage being a risk because you don't Mm. know how things will turn out um now I want to know, would you agree with this? And how did you feel, you know, and if so, what what risk do you feel people do take? What what do you think they mean by that? 
I think that's a really hard question to answer because like Luke said at the start, every relationship is different. We start in different places. We get to different places. For us personally, we would say, no, we would we would disagree in our marriage that it wasn't risk. Um, I think, again, with us, it comes down to I keep saying it, but about being intentional. We did as much as we could. We prepared as well as we could. We were as honest as we could be. We were Mm. as vulnerable as we could be. We were as transparent as we could be. We did everything that we could to have the healthiest relationship possible. And by the time we walked down the aisle, we were ready for that commitment. For us, that was an 18 month mark. Or you could say for us, it was a seven month mark when we committed to each other to get married. So for us, we would say we did not have a sense of risk. Mm. Um, yeah. but we recognize that I think that's individual to every couple yeah yeah yeah, yeah. now and it's interesting because um, we had uh, an interview, I had an interview um, some weeks back with Nikki and Silla Lee. Mm. Um, so you can watch that on the Relationship Hub. Um, and they use the word intentionality. You've talked about that so much. And they have. They said, they've been married for 44 years. They said that's one of the key things about making the marriage work and last. Because it's mm. not a given. You know, marriage isn't a no. given. No. But the so therefore, there are keys to making it work. And I think the fact you've used intentionality so so many times, it, it takes away some of those risk factors, if you mm-hmm. like, because without that, well, there are risks. But with that, yes. you are eliminating those things and your your values, again, come back to values and where you're headed is the same the same place. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, so thank you for answering that question. I just thought this Thanks. is a good question for this for this couple. Absolutely. Um, so you've now been together for four years, um, mm-hmm. married for two. How is your health, Jess? And and to you, both of you, um, how do you manage health going forward? Mm. So my health is as good as it can be at the moment. My disease is in remission, which is the best you can ask Brilliant. for. Which yeah. is just such wonderful news. Um, during um, the COVID season, uh, we did have a health scare with my health. Um, and that was due to having been on a certain type of medication for so long. You know, right. these medications that help you, you're not supposed to be on them for years, but sometimes you can't help but be on them for years. And because I was on them for years, it did cause secondary illnesses. However, we have worked incredibly hard this year. And though that illness is also now in remission. And so yeah. we're good. My health is good. Mm. Again, we're intentional with it. <laughs> we yeah. choose to do the right things to keep me healthy. And to be honest, we don't give it much uh, attention. So, of yeah. course, we're chatting to you now because we want to share our story and it's a privilege mm. to yeah. get the opportunity to. But what I'll tell you is day in, day out, I take the pills I need to take. I yeah. am a wife. I am uh, an auntie. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a leader. I'm an employee. I'm a million things before I am my illness. Yeah. We, yeah. from the start, intentionally decided that we would never put a label on me. So I will never be a person with a chronic illness. For us, that works. For Mm. others, a label can be helpful. But for us, we compartmentalize it. We discuss it when we need to. We make decisions about my health as a couple. Mm. But 99% of the time, it is not a factor. We don't give it much airtime. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting you say, we make decisions together as a couple about my health. And obviously your health is happening to you. Yes. But you're, you know, you're talking about this intentional team. Therefore, yes. mm-hmm. it's not a it's not a one person thing. Yeah. It's a, a together mm-hmm. thing. So mm-hmm. that partly answers my next question. But Luke, I'll ask you this question. So how different would you say is your relationship today because of what you've been through? Um, I think it's it's stronger as as I mean, um, we mentioned earlier because we've gone through this this period before we were married it strengthened our relationship at that stage and it brought us closer together um and and it meant that we knew what we in one sense we knew what we were going into because we'd already gone through a difficult challenge together we knew we could go through something quite scary like yeah um the failure of just his health in that sense yeah. And we've come out the other side and we've come out stronger together. So we know that if we get, not if, but when other challenges come along, whatever they may be, big or small, we know that we can go through it together. We know mm. we've, we've got an experience of going through it together. We know um, what that would look like. We, yeah. we can discuss it. We can um, make decisions 
together. And I think when, when we got to our wedding day, um, we, we, we saw that as two becoming one. So yeah, in one yeah. sense, two separate people becoming one. So everything become, became joint at that stage. Yeah. Yeah. And so Jess's health became our health. My, uh, my job became our, our job, for example. Um, and that, that's so many other things as well. It's not just the little things, it's everything became yeah. joint decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly when it comes to the big decisions, obviously little things like what I'm, what I'm going to have for lunch or... or <laughs> what, Eating what he likes, I don't care. Or, yeah. um, <laughs> what, 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 but what am I going to watch on TV? The, those things we obviously don't make joint decisions. But the big things, yeah. It, yeah. things about health, things yeah. about family, things about... Finances. Like finances, life, those big mm. things. We all mm. we always make sure that we make those together. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm just, again, reflecting. I'm sometimes aware when I'm doing interviews with people and they've gone through difficult times and we're having a chat and we're smiling and there's been some moments where we feel slightly moved, but it's all over in a few moments. But for somebody or for a couple who are living through the sorts of things Mm. you lived through a while back, it can be, you know, really hard because you're right in the thick Mm. of it. But I think for me, what you're describing is the fact that you it's evident you've come through it you're still going through it, but you've come mm. through that really yeah. tough time yeah. and it's possible to go through the worst of the worst moments together mm. and yes. yeah. and come out stronger as you have done so and and obviously I know you we, we're going to come back to this word intentionality it's one of my favorite words um <laughs> but um that intentionality continues with you both and you I know you've talked before about making sure you check in with each other and stay connected. And you've you've adopted a bit of a routine, which I think is like a bit of gold for people listening. So mm-hmm. tell us what it is that you do. It is. <laughs> and the more I talk about it, the more I think, do I need to trademark these questions? Yeah, you should do. <laughs> no, absolutely. So um, we, uh, great coincidence um, that in February 20... When did COVID hit? 20? 2020. 2020. Uh, we just, we just realised we, you know, now that things are okay, because my health is generally okay, we don't check in as much as we, as we did. And, you know, we, we, we always have date days and date nights and we're, we're big on quality time together yeah. and we're very intentional. But we thought, hey, we should really be doing this on a daily basis because I don't want to get to the end of the week. And then Luke tells me something that happened on Tuesday and I'd love to know so I can mm-hmm. support you. So we kind of developed these five questions and over time they've developed. We didn't just come up with them instantly. Um, But we'll, yeah, we'll explain them maybe briefly what they are and why we do them. So the first one is... Um, How are you you feeling physically on a scale of one to ten? And that's about checking in with with each other, how we're feeling physically. Because it may be on on any given day, you may have a bit of a headache, but it's not enough to text the other person about... So you just want to check in, especially with, with just going through a health scare. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, I think it's one of the things that, that we're big on is, is checking in how we're feeling physically. Because um, it, it may be that for a few days you've, you've got the, the same kind of problem and then you can actually go, oh, hang on, this has been a few days where, I don't know, my, my wrist has been hurting, for example. I mean, just like that out of thin air. And, and it may be actually what you notice the recurring things there, mm. so you can then treat that that by yeah. going to the doctors or by doing something about it so yeah. absolutely and it's if Luke's telling me for the third day now he's got a headache I might be saying well you know what I'm going to do all the dishes you have an early night yeah. you know yeah. it's about recognizing well I'm going to cook dinner tonight because you've got a bit of a sore throat it's not about being a doctor it's just about yeah understanding mm. um so the second question similar to number one how are you feeling emotionally from one to ten Again, yeah. we all have bad days and some days are really bad. Some days you can lose your job, get a bad diagnosis. There's a bereavement. But some days, maybe your boss was just a bit sharp with you at work or, mm. you know, you made a mistake or you're just feeling a little bit low. And again, it may not be enough to tell the other one. Mm. But by giving that space at the end of the day, you're able to say, I'm an eight. OK, why are you an eight? Oh, I'm just feeling a bit low at the moment or... Oh, that project at work is really taking it out of me. 
And we're yeah, not there yeah. to play God. We're not there to solve it. Mm. It's just yeah. to listen and support. Yeah. So yeah. it's also important. You because your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Completely. Yeah. And so it's important to check in. To check that. in. So you know how the other person's feeling. Yeah, um, yeah. So you can listen and and so they can so you can listen to what they're saying, being yeah. intentional yeah. about listening to it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you can you can then um that they can then feel like mm-hmm. they can share that with, with the other yeah, person then. Absolutely. So number three is what are three things you're grateful for? Now Very good. this does not need to be I am grateful that we have just booked a holiday to the Bahamas where I've <laughs> never been. Honestly, sometimes I'm just grateful for that bacon sandwich I ate this morning. Yeah. Oh yes, I'm that's just, a good thing to be grateful for. You I'm know? Good that. <laughs> or I'm really grateful that I got good news from a doctor today. Yeah. Or I'm grateful I got to play with my four-year-old niece. Like they yeah. don't need to be massive things. But in life, life's overwhelming, things happen. And even yeah. when you feel like nothing's good happened, mm. I guarantee you there is at least one thing to be grateful for. So yeah. we just name big or small, no drama, yeah. but what are they? It helps us to remain grateful. And actually neuroscientists have shown that Gratitude rewires your brain. And I would say that if Luke and I had not been doing these questions prior to a second diagnosis during our COVID season, we would not have dealt with it as well. But instead of me becoming a victim of my illness, I was able to say, okay, this isn't good, but thank you, it's not cancer. Yeah. This isn't good, but thank you, it's not terminal. This isn't good, but thank you. And it has rewired the way that we speak. Honestly, it's changed our brains yeah um, what's number four number four what went well today so okay again that that could be that, that kind of ties in with gratitude um but that doesn't necessarily need to be need to be something you're grateful for it's just something that's gone well so it could be something big like you've passed your driving test or it could be something little like i watched my favorite tv program um or or things like that so it's just something that that, that went well today and during the course of the day you may have the worst day you may have been you may have lost your job and even in the worst day you can still try and find something that's well, gone well and it's about and that's about trying to it's not about trying to ignore all the bad things it's about trying to actually even on the, the most difficult days actually that went well today mm-hmm. i've had something that's mm. gone well today it's about recognizing things that have gone well and there have yeah. been days when i have been in bed weeping saying nothing Nothing has gone well today. It has been hell on earth. I cannot cope. And Luca said, talk me through your day. Yeah. And it, and it, I got up, I got up with a headache. And then I was in traffic on the way to work. And then my boss was harsh to me. And you can go and go, but there will be something that went well though. And yeah. it could be tiny. And then the yeah. final question that we do together is, what have you done today that you're proud of? You'll see yeah. that there's themes here, they're thematic. But again, what are you proud of? Some of us can list things. I am gifted in this. I'm talented in this. I'm just wonderful. But others of us, and I think we would probably fit into this category, maybe struggle a little bit to recognise the things that we're proud of. We're not Mm. people who are naturally um, outgoing in that way where we can just list things that are wonderful. And so it can be, what am I proud of? I am proud that I had that difficult conversation with someone that I've been putting off. Yeah. I am proud that I finally did that thing on the to-do list. Yeah. I am proud I finally fixed the tap. So again, it's just finding something in the day that you're proud yeah. of. And these things, well, it's all about connection. It's yeah. vulnerability. The more vulnerable you are, the more connection you create, mm. the stronger your relationship. And yeah. for us, we're quite evangelistic about it. What I mean by that is I will tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> if you chat to me for more than half an hour, I'm telling you about the five questions. Because yeah. the impact on our relationship it's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And I think actually that, you know, you've touched on the whole mental health thing earlier and mm-hmm. that that way of tackling struggles because we all have mental health is about the health of your thinking and your brain and your emotions. And we all yes. have that. We all have health at different levels. So whether you're somebody that feels as though your health is like doing really well in that area or right mm-hmm. at the bottom, this is a way of not just kind of maintaining it, but increasing that wherever you're starting from. So I think it's a really yes. good 
illustration. Actually, if you're not married and you, you know, with friends or whoever, just speaking those things out yeah. Um, yeah. is a really, really healthy thing. And particularly for guys who don't tend to do it as much, let's be honest, kind of yeah. women will talk more, guys yeah. won't, you know, actually having that kind of pattern of behavior helps, you know, people to think differently. Um, okay. Very last question. Um, honestly, amazing, amazing story. But I would just like to ask this last question. And that is, how do you feel about the future after all that you've been through and experienced together? Oh, excited. So mm. excited. Like I'm, you know, it sounds cliche, but I'm just so grateful that this is the man that I get to spend the rest of my life with. You, you, you said at the start, we've, we've been together four years. We wouldn't be married for two years. There's a lot of marriage ahead of us. Yeah. You know, decades upon decades. And we're excited to one day become parents. However, you know, that comes to us. Mm. We're excited about traveling, making memories, experiencing life, helping mm. others, and just uh, just being a team. Like we are, yeah. aren't we? We're just excited. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's the, the word is excited. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I haven't gone through difficult things. I mean, I'm excited to see what life brings. Yeah. Um, and I know that I've got someone in, in, in Jess who I can go through difficult things with because we've already gone through it together. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's excitement. Just excitement. Just excitement. We are just excited for, for the next chapter. And I think though, what you've said there, Luke, as well about knowing you have someone in Jess that will stand with you and go through the tough yeah. times. I think, almost it's given you a greater confidence, not um, a cockiness of, oh, we'll be fine no. now, but it's that, you know, we build on experience, don't we? It's right that we feel confident about things. Yeah. Don't take them for granted, but build on no. that and grow yeah. together and, yeah. um, and look ahead Absolutely. to see see what's next. Um, Luke and Jess, thank you so much. Thank you for your your story. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for your positivity, particularly knowing that you've clearly spoken about the lowest of low times that nobody would wish to go through mm. um so it's just been great to have you on the relationship hub um and yeah i maybe in a few years time we'll do another catch up but thank you very much and thank you so much for watching the relationship hub today um i often talk about inspiration luke and jess their story is so inspiring so please do like this video tell others about it and please subscribe to the channel Thank you for watching The Relationship Hub.